I know I'm gonna sound a little bit like a broken record because I'm doing yet another video on Lightroom masking. But I want also the Capture One users to stick with me on this video because I have a chore for you guys. I wanna do a comparison and look at Lightroom versus Capture One and show you what just happened with Lightroom masks in this video, the best way to use it and how it's honestly kind of mind blowing. And let's start with Lightroom and then I'm gonna do a little Capture One comparison. To start with, let's come into Lightroom. And we're gonna take like four photos today and quickly edit them. But let's start with a little comparison of Lightroom to Capture One. I put these in their raw state just to kind of go through the process. So I might turn the exposure up a little bit on this. I would probably go to something like Filmist. Let's do a Filmist uh, Portra 400 on this. It looks good. And there, we have a nice process. So in the past, this is where Lightroom would stop and we would go into Photoshop or a pixel editor. And to be clear, on my very best photos, I'm still gonna take them into Photoshop because I can always do more as I've showed you in the video on Lightroom versus Photoshop. You'll see if we go to the mask tool up here, it's now detecting the people. So we have a couple new options. We can do subject, we had that before, and sky, we had that before, now we can do background. Before we had to select the subject and then invert it. But now we can select people. But it doesn't just select the subject. It goes through and detects everything with the AI engine. And now it allows us to select each individual item like face, body, teeth, hair, and say, I want all of these selected, or I just want skin selected, for example, or I want you to make all of these as separate masks. And that's what we're gonna do right here is separate masks. Create, and it's gonna go through and give us all these masks. So we now have a mask for each individual element. I know it can look a little bit confusing, and I'm gonna show you in a second how to be more efficient with it. But now we can select each of these right down to the eyebrows, right? And we can take the lips, we can do all parts of this and then decide independently. So for example, the reason this is important is I might drop down the clarity on the face or the skin a lot, but then I say, well, I don't want the eyes to be soft. So I can take the eyes and sharpen those. I can take the hair and turn the clarity or texture up a little bit on that. We can do so much more because we can take these and now save them name them, organize them into a preset that we can apply to any image that's automatically named, that has settings automatically built in. I'm gonna show you how to be more efficient, but let's go to Capture One real quick because I don't wanna ignore Capture One. We need this competition in the industry and Capture One is a great app. Here's our raw file in Capture One. It feels a little darker. I've told you guys a lot of times that inherently these two engines just process differently. I'm gonna exposure up a little bit just play with my settings a little bit. But ultimately, I'm gonna go right over to here to custom styles, and I'm going to go to Filmus and apply that same Portra. And I might tweak with it a little bit because it, it looks a little different. I'm gonna turn the saturation down a little bit in the adjust tab. And maybe I move that exposure up a little bit too much. Some of our difference in processing in a photo like this between Lightroom and Capture One, it's just the way it interprets the raw file. So depending on where I'm editing, I might tweak with the white balance and things like that a little bit to get it dialed in. What can we do in Capture One with layers? Because in the past, Capture One was way ahead of Lightroom in its layers. There's more sliders in the Capture One layers and things like that. Here's the problem. Capture One has none of these AI auto select tools and those are the huge time saver. If I have to manually select all this stuff, at that point, I might as well just go to Photoshop, do manual layers, use actions like Loomist and Alchemist and things like that, because I can have a more finite level of refinement, obviously, in Photoshop than in Lightroom or Capture One. So what I would have to do here is go to Capture One and add a new layer. Okay, great. Pretty much the only auto select tool I have, though, is this magic brush. I can select the magic brush and then go into here, for example, and try to make a mask of this layer. Let's select the dark areas like over the hair. So what did it select? Well, it basically selected a color range. We've had color range selection in Photoshop for decades now. And basically this is the same as kind of the magic auto select brush that we had in Lightroom before the AI masking. So it is useful. I could say, let's, let's kind of darken down, add a little more blacks and contrast play with the shadow and highlights. Okay, great, I have one layer here and I've kind of darkened down my background and my darks, but it kind of lumped them all together is the problem. Now I can go to the magic brush again, let's create another layer here in Capture One 
and I'm going to kind of select the skin tones and see what happens here. Well, what did we select? It did select the skin tones, but it also selected a bunch of other stuff. But okay, I can now go here and say, let's do a little clarity. Let's drop our clarity down. Let's drop our structure down a little bit. And we're going to get a little bit of this. We can warm up the skin. But of course, while it is working, we're getting a lot of spillover. So one is affecting more the darks right here. And the other is affecting more the skin tones, but still a lot of other stuff. The bottom line is here, okay, I think we have a pretty good edit. She looks nice. And that's what we can do essentially in Capture One. I realize we can manually select and use all the sliders we have available in layers in Capture One, but here's the problem I'm having is that in Lightroom, I can just apply the auto mask. Ultravase, we're here in Lightroom, and now let's come back and say, all right, we did a few of these masks, but let me show you the faster way. I'm gonna delete all these masks that we made. What I did is I carefully built all up, out all these masks. I put settings that were kind of universal as much as possible that would work on a lot of variety of images. And I saved those into a preset, which is in the new update. For those of you that use my Elegant Speed Masks pack, it's in the new update. It's actually the only update in the Elegance 4.4 Speed Masks, but that is this new Portrait 1 AI preset right here, okay? So if I click this, it's gonna take a second and it's gonna run all of those. It's gonna do all the selection of the face, all the separations and apply all the settings. And you can see here, because they were part of a preset, they're all named, they're organized. We can do subject master, we can do background. So I could individually select any part. I could say, no, it feels a little too bright. I'm gonna take subject master and turn it down a little bit. And look at what we're doing to the details on this. Every one of these has a different level of settings depending on what it applies. And let's just zoom in. Let me zoom in on this. Turn the masks off, started, finished. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing with this. Let's go straight to a basic process. So I'm just gonna go to something simple like Portra 400, okay? And I'm gonna turn up my white balance a little bit. It's a little bit off. I'm just gonna tweak with it a little bit. Let's go straight to that preset and I'm gonna apply Portrait 1 AI from Elegance. And you can see it takes a few seconds and boom. Look at this. There's a lot of great ways to do this. For example, in the past, let me just clear this for a second. I might do Portrait AI Beauty Combo which does work great on a lot of things, but what it's essentially doing is a lot simpler, which sometimes you want a lot simpler. We essentially have a behind subject or background, right? And we have a subject and we can soften and things like that. But if I soften this too much, you see it because it softens everything, right? Let me clear that again. Let's delete all masks and do the one AI. In this preset, it's separating them all out, which sometimes might be too much, but now I can say, okay, I want the face, I want to soften it down a lot, but it's leaving everything else alone. So I can soften all this facial skin as much as I want, texture, clarity, etc. And my hair is completely separate. I can retain the hair. I can retain sharpness in the eyes and detail, color in the eyes, and do this all independently. So let me just turn the masks off. Good process, simple, classic raw process with a portrait look, masks on. This thing's ready to show the client. Here's what happens. I'm gonna show you a couple more tricks here as we go along. And don't go away, you capture one users, because I want you to see this. And at the end, I want you to take this to phase one. And here's the thing, the AI is barely missing. So if I take more of a street scene like this, but that clearly has a person in it, and do this same thing and run that same preset from Elegance 4.4, what's it gonna do? It's gonna put all of those in just like this. All right, now here's the beauty. If you save this into a preset, and I think maybe Adobe saw the idea when these masks first came out, we were basically being asked to just do this manually. And I immediately said, no, we're putting these into develop presets. Adobe even put some new adaptive presets that use these, they're pretty limited, honestly, like most of the built-in presets. And so I won't actually use them, but they actually saw the value. They're like, wait a minute, anything we do over here in the masks panel, anything we set up so we can build this out, we can use the AI, but then we can name and organize all the layers. And 
all of that when we save it into a preset. And Adobe's done a great job of designing this pretty elegantly so we can save these, it applies them. Early on when they did the AI, you had to manually update the masks, but now it just does it automatically. It's very intuitive and fast now, and you can do it in batches and it, it just works. Now you can also just copy and paste. Obviously you're gonna save time by having these in presets of some kind, but if you've been tweaking around with an image and then you wanna copy it to a group, all you have to do is copy and paste just those settings. So I can shift control C and bring up copy, select just the, the things related to the masking, right? Copy. And then I can go in to the next image and I can just paste those with shift control V and it'll drop them in and update them. So here's a portrait here. And again, I'm gonna do a develop preset. So let's mix it up. Let's go to like Belladonna this time. Let's do something like Snow Fade and do kind of a soft color in this sunset portrait scene. Turn up the exposure just a touch. Okay, this is nice, right? It looks good. But now let's paste all of those in. So I'm gonna shift control V or shift command V. It's gonna update all the way down to all the eye settings, retaining all the settings that I saved, but pasting them all in ready to go. Now, let me show you another little secret of the beauty of naming all these layers and having them saved in a preset that actually is a huge time saver, okay? So let's say I took the lips, all right? And I did something crazy with them, like made them, I don't know, blue. Now we have blue lips and it's a little wild, but it does show you just how good the selection is on these and how clean the AI selections are coming out. All right, what I wanna show you though is if I go back to this preset in the latest version of Elegance, it didn't have to run the AI again. It just updated all the layers because the layers were all named. It didn't duplicate the layers. It said those layers already exist. I'm just gonna update them to the parameters in the preset. So if I messed around and did a bunch of stuff and then I said, oh, this, this looks too much, it looks ugly. I can just change it. But get this, it gets even better because remember, don't forget any of the develop presets now, we can do the amount slider. So I've just applied this. Here's what we did with our masks, off, on. All the masks applied, intelligently applying the settings that were in the preset and ready to go. I can now just click the slider and turn it up, right? So I can go a fairly soft light application at say 30%. Uh, when I'm doing portraits, I tend to like a fairly subtle edit that's not this over the top, but sometimes you want a bold edit. I could turn this up and, and have this all the way to like this porcelain skin. The more I turn it up, the more it's increasing all the layers independently. So the more it turns up, the more her hair stands out, the more the face stands out. I could now combine this with just a simple filmic ISO like from Filmist, right? And so I put a little bit of grain, a little bit of ISO. Look at this. We went from here in the raw file in just a handful of clicks. Would I edit it this far? No, but it's good to show you guys that on the screen just so you can see the power of that. And the beauty is with that opacity slider, you're not just adjusting one. You can come in and say, no, let's just reset all those back to kind of their baseline as they were in the preset. And then I'm gonna turn them all up and down. Is this gonna be a resource hog? Yeah, you bet it is. And I can hear my fans spinning up. I'm actually having video bogged down. I'm trying to record 4K video and do this all at the same time. Capture One uses a lot of resources and bogs down on me often as well. Although I think for most people find that Capture One is a little bit less resource intensive than Lightroom. The fact that I can just say, hey, let's take the lips and I can go crazy. I can make my lips blue if I want to. And then I could say, well, let's, let's take the hair and let's do something with it and you know, let's lighten it, let's darken it. You have all these things that you can just do in real time. So I can just start mixing and doing crazy things that I probably would never actually even want to do. I, I recognize this, this looks ridiculous, but I think it's gonna make a great poster. Wow, amazing. If you're an Elegance user, definitely go download the update because this preset alone is gonna do some amazing things for you in portrait editing. And if you, don't, if you don't have Elegance, check it out. I'll put a link down below and I'll also put a discount for you guys in the comments. It supports my work in the channel. And however you do this, there's a lot of power in here and I hope that we can see other apps catching up with this so we can maintain that, that competition role. We've looked at the fact that we can barely touch this in Capture One. And like the comparison was not really even fair because we can't even come close in any sort of the similar time frame. 
If you're a Capture One user, I hope that we can band together a little bit and let's start sending messages to Phase One and just be straight with them. Look, Adobe is blowing you guys out of the water in what they're doing with layers and AI selections. We're paying you guys for Capture One on a yearly basis, on a subscription basis. You need to, you need to up the ante, you need to pick up the game. We want to see more in 2023. And I hope pretty soon phase one is gonna come out with something that's gonna be a real competition because they can. Phase one's develop tools are incredibly powerful, but we need to see some kind of an engine for these kind of selections. And the beauty of these AI selections versus this over the top selfie kind of AIs is the AI is doing the heavy lifting of making all these normally complex selections, but we still have all the individual control over these layers. You guys tell me what you think. Hope you hit that like button, leave a comment, and we'll see you on the next video.